Okay, today what I'd like to do is I'd like to work some of the problems that were uh, due uh, in this particular section. There were six problems. Uh, the first problem I want to look at is problem OYS. It is a certain size rigid tank, which is well insulated, contains a substance oxygen uh, at a temperature and a pressure. A paddle wheel is placed into the tank and it's turned on. The temperature of the oxygen then rises 240 Kelvin to 240 Kelvin. And we are to determine the final pressure in the tank and how much paddle wheel work was done during the process. Uh, in this problem, we are asked to use the real gas model with the Lee Kessler charts. And we'll talk about that. And so this is, if we ask system substance process, uh, this is a closed system. Uh, the substance itself is oxygen. And the process is an adiabatic work in, you know, work problem associated with this rigid tank. And so we now can go to our test app. Uh, the test app then would be a simple process under the closed system and uh, we look and we ask ourselves, okay, we're going to use a gas model. Uh, the gas model will be for oxygen, but it will be a real gas model. And so we'll be selecting the RG. This is the first time that we've actually uh, specified the real gas model. Uh, we then go to our HTML5, and now we have our <clears throat> first state. Okay, so in this first state, we can, the first thing we have to do is, as it, as it indicated in the problem, we want to use the Lee Kessler model as opposed to the Nelson Obert model uh, for the substance of oxygen, O2. And so we've, we've specified that. Looking at state uh, one then, the pressure at state one is nine megapascals. So it's quite a high pressure, way above the critical point. Uh, and the temperature in Kelvin is uh, 200. And so the first thing that we should notice is that because we're using uh, the real gas analysis, it's going to then uh, take the pressure and divide it by the critical pressure for oxygen. And this is then the reduced pressure uh, which we can see is 1.78. Likewise, the same thing is done uh, taking the temperature in Kelvin and dividing it by the critical temperature associated with the oxygen. And we see that the reduced temperature is 2.29. Uh, okay. The calculated compressibility factor from the chart uh, at this reduced pressure and this reduced temperature, we see is 71.71. So that's telling us that this particular oxygen at this high pressure and at this low temperature uh, is acting as 71% of what a real, an, an ideal gas would behave. An ideal gas PV over RT would be equal to 1. Uh, and what we see is we see that the pressure uh, pressure volume is actually 71% uh, of what it would be at that particular temperature. We also have in here the departure values. And so we spoke of the departure charts uh, last time. And we see that this is the uh, the departure of the enthalpy with respect to the ideal gas enthalpy behavior. And this is the departure of the entropy with respect to the ideal gas uh, entropy. Uh, we would use those charts if we were actually using the charts to solve this particular problem. Okay, what else do we know in this problem before we leave? We know that the size of the vessel is 0.5 uh, cubic meters. 
And so we have 121 kilograms of oxygen in this tank at those conditions. So that's our incoming, uh, that is our initial condition. Uh, we then go to state two. Uh, what we know about state two is it's at the same volume as state one. It's also oxygen. Uh, but now in this particular case, we know uh, that the uh, temperature has been elevated up to 240 because of the work that's put in. And now we won't be able to, you know, know what the pressure is until we put the amount of work in through uh, the process panel. Uh, so do we know anything else? Well, at this temperature, this final temperature, we see uh, that the reduced temperature is given. And so in order to, we also know for this particular problem, if this volume, we know the mass stays the same. And so it turns out in this particular problem that knowing the mass, uh, and, and that basically gives us the specific volume, and knowing the temperature, which is the second thermodynamic property, uh, we then have enough information to calculate uh, the final pressure. And so as we can see here, the final pressure is 12.59 megapascals. We see that the reduced pressure went up to about 2.5. We see that the oxygen's behavior uh, went a little bit closer to ideal gas behavior, but it's still only 83% of the ideal gas uh, behavior associated with the compressibility factor. So uh, we also have the, uh, <clears throat> the departure value for enthalpy and the departure value for entropy. And so all we need to now do is go to the process panel and determine uh, for this adiabatic process, okay, it was a well-insulated tank. It was also rigid, which means that there's no boundary work occurring uh, as we go from state one to state two. Again, what do we know about this? We know that there is no boundary work. Boundary work would be if the if the walls uh, were moving, and so there is no boundary work. And we also notice that this W0 has been preset to zero, okay? Now, because in this case, what is W0? W0 is shaft work or electrical work. And so in this particular problem, we know that the change of the state is due to shaft work. So we need to turn this off and we need to go over and make sure that we set that the heat transfer is equal to zero. So it was trying to say that all of the change in temperature was due to heat transfer, but we know that there is no heat transfer and there is no boundary work. And so it then determines that the shaft work uh, was equal to or is equal to, uh, <clears throat> if I put this into megajoules, uh, 3.61. So it's work going into the system, uh, and that is what causes the temperature to go up. Uh, and I believe in the textbook, uh, since it asked the, for the paddle wheel work done during the process, uh, this is one of those problems where uh, the software is looking for just the absolute value of the work because it says done during the process by the paddle wheel. So uh, one would answer that as just a 3.61 megajoules. Okay, so that answers, so that is this particular problem.